name is Stephen Moore from Moore Legal Technology. At Moore Legal Technology, we specialize in making the most out of the internet for our law firms in terms of online business generation. Today, I'm going to give you, um, or I'm going to answer probably the most important question that needs to be asked prior to commencing any online marketing activity. And that question is this, how much money can my law firm make from the internet? It truly is the million dollar question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive straight in to show you this tool that we've developed that we'll make available for you at the link below that you can use to work out exactly how much money your law firm can make or the department that you run in your law firm can make from online marketing and deciding on the appropriate budget that you want to spend. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm using Zoom to record this. I'm going to just share my screen, move into this tool that we've developed, which is as you can see up there is the uh, marketing ROI calculator for law firms. Now, you may initially start by wondering what's ROI. Now, we are familiar with that term. Some may not be, but that's return on investment. Um, at Moore Legal Technology, what we specialize in doing or what we aim to do is to return 10 times return on investment. So for every one pound a customer spends with us, we aim to return to them 10 times that amount in new business opportunities. So that's ROI. And what we're aiming to do is provide you with a quick and easy tool that you can use. You can change the data within it and it will spit out the results that you want. Obviously, if you want to get more specific and more accurate, this is a good starting point. Then we need to dive a bit more, a bit more into your specific firm and the specific services that you offer. However, this is a, a brilliant tool for sort of methodology and understanding. So there's five easy steps we've got. Um, step one, you see here, insert your firm's gross revenue here. Now, we've put that in here as a million pounds. You can change it to be 500,000 pounds. It can be dollars. It can be baht. It can be whatever currency. That doesn't really matter. Um, this can be amended. This sells in yellow are the ones that can be changed. So they don't contain formulas. So I've put in there 500,000. So you'll see then that starts to affect the numbers that are spat out below. But what we'll do is we'll put it back to the million pounds in revenue just to keep it simple. Um, the next step, step two, is the percentage of gross revenue that you spend on marketing. Now, it's recommended that you would spend between five and 8% of gross revenue on marketing. What we are covering in this is online marketing is your digital spend. And you know we would suggest that if you are a retail focused firm in particular, that the vast majority of your marketing budget should be spent in digital marketing because of the returns that you can generate. We'll set it, you know, if you say five to eight, we'll set it at 5%. You can see you can change Click in the arrow, change the variables here, 2% drops the annual marketing spend and the marketing spend per month, 5% goes the other way. So what we're saying here is that for a firm with a million pounds in annual revenue and a 5% gross marketing spend, that the annual marketing spend then would work out as being 50,000 pounds, marketing spend per month, 4,000 pounds per month. Now, that might be cheap for you or a bit too rich for your blood, depending on your perspective. You've really got to understand here the objective here is to understand how much money you will get from the money you spend. This is not a case of half the money I spend in advertising is wasted. The problem is I don't know what half. This is eminently trackable and you should understand the return on every single penny that you spend. Okay. So we've got in here the annual marketing spend of £50,000 a year and a marketing spend per month of £4,166. It's very easy to understand what steps you should take and in what order. Step one, step two, step three. Again, the yellow boxes are ones where you can amend the data. The other boxes have the calculations behind them and they will then spit out your results. Location is critical for legal services, and I don't mean in terms of where you actually are. Um, it's much more about understanding 
the size of your area, how much search traffic you're likely to get, how many people are going to be looking for your services. There's a difference in terms of competition. For example, you know, London family law, very, very dense uh, population, obviously, very significant population, but also a very big city. It's going to be competitive, but you don't need as much of a share of that as you might think in order to really get good results from online marketing in that area. You have to just be a bit more geo-specific. So you might be looking at boroughs or postcodes, for example. But the reason that we have put this information in here is that we have been doing this work, generating business online for law firms for must be about 15 years now. You know, for the past 14 years or 13 years, I think we've focused on it almost exclusively. Over that period, we have built up a significant amount of data and a significant understanding of the results that you can achieve. The net outcome of that is that we have used data in the background to populate this so that we can estimate for you how much traffic you're likely to get depending upon the area in which you live, as in how busy is it? So we've classed here a major city as being anything over 250,000 in population, a small city or town as being between 125,000 and 250,000, and a rural town as being greater than 255,000. By changing this, so I want you to look at the numbers below, we've got potential monthly website visitors here. If we change this from town, from major city to town, small city, you can see that number drops. Now this is an estimate, it's based on our data. It will depend on the types of services that you offer and the competition, et cetera. However, this is a very good guideline. So we'll set it here as a town or small city, okay? Um, got a rural town, small city town, major city. We've changed that to be a million pounds, want of revenue, <clears throat> excuse me. And we've got 5% gross marketing spend. So we've done step one, step two, step three complete, step four. Now, I don't know how long exactly that's taken me, but it's not taking me much time. Step four is in your average fee value. There are two things that will really affect how much money you generate from your online marketing and how much money you will generate in general terms. One is your average fee value. It's really critical to understand that. You must know how much each particular type of work that you bring in generates you so you can make decisions as to where you want to go going forward. In addition, if you can make minor amendments by moving your average fee value up, then you'll earn more money for less work, which is always a good thing. So in here, we have done this on the basis of a general practice firm. We have listed the work types as family, private client, residential convincing, employment, personal injury, crime, and commercial. Family law, you know, a thousand pounds might be a reasonable average fee. Private client, I'd say we might be closer to the £750 a month. You can see you can change them. Residential conveyancing, uh, say employment law, we're doing more work for employers. We're maybe getting slightly less of it. In fact, with that, put that too. Again, you know, these are just, these are variables. These are numbers that will vary. You have to put in the numbers that are right for your firm in order for this to be meaningful for you. Um, personal injury, See, we do bigger work, three and a half grand, um, crime, 500, depending if you get more corporate crime. And I think commercial work, you're going to get less of it from the internet. However, what you should get should bring good fees. So we'll put that up to 6,000 pounds for commercial work. Now, these may not be similar. They may be far too low for you. They may be too high for you. These are just numbers and should be treated as such but they will affect your output. The more realistic you are, the more accurate you are, the better the results you will be from this, okay? Step five is your conversion rate. This is really, really important as well. The hardest thing or the hardest thing to do in terms of generating new business, building additional revenue is taking on new customers. You know, new customers take time to win. You have to build up trust. You have to build a relationship. And then you build into feeing. What we ideally want to do is one is, is make our conversion rate from lead to new customer as efficient as possible. So we have to generate less of the leads. 
So if, for example, for every 10 qualified inquiries that you get through your website, so that is an inquiry that would generally meet your criteria. Your criteria may be, can they pay? Is it of work that I want to do? Are they in the right area? Um, these are you know, questions that lead to the pre-qualification phase. One should go over that for every 10. If you are converting two, out of those 10, I would suggest that that's not a particularly good conversion rate. You know, law is a distress purchase. It's something that people search for when they need it. They do not browse for legal services unless it's something that they actually require. People are ready to buy, particularly if you are presenting in the correct way. You're trustworthy. You answer the questions. You communicate with them effectively. At this point, it's really, really important to understand that your conversion rate will be directly affected by how, how efficiently you deal with new inquiries as they can. How quickly are you getting back in touch with them? Are you answering their calls? There is a suggestion, and there are suggestions that only 35% of new business calls coming into law firms actually get answered. You know, that, that's a huge waste and a huge waste of money. Um, and it's something that you really need to focus on if you're going to be serious about your online marketing efforts because the results for you can be absolutely game-changing. So we'll leave these at the moment because I want to show you the next step, how they affect your results. We'll put them in here as out of two every 10 inquiries, you're going to convert across these work types. Okay. The Over on the right, we have the calculations and the output. We've, we discussed this earlier, you've got your town, your small city, that's where you're located. And we have estimated that for those particular work types, the amount of traffic that you will get. We've always tried to describe online marketing or digital marketing as a way of putting your firm on a street full of people actually looking for you, what you do. You know, you'd have a high street presence, you'd have offices and people would wander randomly by and maybe would pop in, but your chances are relatively slim. What Google does and what search engines do is they provide people with a way of expressing their intent or expressing their need. My need is for is to speak to a lawyer about um, a house that I wish to buy or a flat that I wish to buy. Or my son recently had a personal injury accident on holiday. That was something that I needed to deal with. I, and I also had a commercial issue that I was looking to get resolved. So my first port and call, depending upon where it is, you know, it's slightly different for me because I work with a lot of solicitors, but in general terms for the general members of the public, their first port of call will be Google. And what we want to do is to make sure that your site is presenting on that street full of people looking for you. And it's through the data that Google provides that we are able to provide this analysis on what your estimated traffic is likely to be. So that's where these numbers come from. The website conversion rate, optimized website conversion rate. This is the rate at which your website converts a visitor into an inquiry. It's a very important number to understand. And it's equally as important as the um, conversion rate from call to client. Okay. So what this is saying is that for every 100 visitors to your site, four will make an inquiry. These are reasonable estimates. You may think that that is a small number, but there's a variety of other sectors where the number is far, far smaller. Ideally, if you know over time, you can begin to move these up through good reviews, through trust icons, through calls to action, etc. We can move these rates up, but these are rates that we've put and they're based on our experience of what actually occurs in the world at the moment when people are visiting websites and looking to um, law firm websites and looking to instruct a solicitor. So what we've done is we've taken 4% of 624 and we have put in a monthly inquiry level of 24 inquiries per month. Based on our conversion rate of, you know, these numbers behind won't exactly be accurate. So based on a conversion rate of 20%, we put, put um, five clients would be converted. This will be something like 24.75 or something in the background, which is why you're getting five as a fifth of 24 when it should be 25. 
Okay, so that would explain that number. And as we drop down through the sheet, you can see this corresponds in um, each rule. Okay. We've worked out the cost per lead as a division of the spend over here, divided by the categories, divided by um, how many inquiries are generating. So that will tell you which categories are, are cheapest in terms of lead generation. And in the next column, what we've been able to do is work out here what your predicted revenue will be as a result of converting those inquiries at that particular rate. Now, so what we can see here is, so that number in there is actually 4.8, as you can see it, because what was suggested here is that for, you will take on uh, five clients at £1,000 a month, so that would be £5,000 a month, but because of the um, decimals in the background, it works out as 1800 but you get a picture and it's enough to get a very good estimate as to what you're likely to achieve. As we drop down through that, we'll be able to see for each particular work type or so for private client looking at £750 a month, 109 website visitors, you can, you're going to get five, um, one new piece of business, £750 a month. And that follows all the way through. It should be very, very easy for you to follow this. At the bottom, what we then have is the uh, return on investment for that monthly spend. Now, you may remember that at the outset, I said we aim to return 10 times return on investment. £30,000 is less than you know, the £41,000. It would be 10 times return on investment. And this is where I want to show you what becomes really important. In these factors, and that's your fee value and your conversion rate. Family is often quite a distressful situation and people are ready to convert at that particular point. We would expect a good conversion rate in family law to be closer to 30%, even 40. So if we move up that up to 30%, sorry, I'll put that back there so we can look at it before. So here we've got 4,800 um, from five or 4.8 converting quantities, as you remember. If we move that up to 30%, then for the same spend, we actually convert uh, seven clients and we end up with 7,200 pounds worth of revenue. So that's the same spend, it's just you've improved your conversion rate and your call handling. Um, private client, if we were actually to think, well, actually what we want to do is to move our fee, try and move our average fee up, value up, be aware of it and be targeted with it from 750 to 1,000 pounds. Then we move that up to 1,000 pounds where it was around about um, 700. Um, residential conveyancing, 1,200 pounds might be a bit steep. I don't know that. But again, if you're converting well and you're getting the visitors, you should be able to move that up to 30%. The critical thing here is quick, efficient call handling and follow-ups. We're going to talk more about that in a future podcast, but this was really, this tool is really to help you at the outset estimate as a business case, if you're the marketing partner in your law firm, if you're a marketing manager, if you're a marketing professional within a firm, if you're a head of department and you want to consider this, this is for you to build your business case around it. Personal injury, you know, that's a very, if you get the visitors, it's a competitive area. You're very competitive area from an online search point of view, but if you're operating in a location where, you know, you're a well-known name, you're a local firm, you're a high street firm, you can uh, gain the leverage from that brand, then again, I think we should be moving that up to maybe more 30, not 354%, that would be incredible, 35%. Now that really bangs your revenue up. It's really, really good, moving from 35%, and it's really looking at these levers. Commercial work is harder to come by online. But again, you should be using your experience and your long-tail content. That's content about matters that are, that are relevant, that are topical, that are good earners for you. And you should be producing decent content for your site, getting on there and trying to attract converting traffic for this. Again, if we move that up 30%, um, that moves the fee value from there up to 40, um, sorry, 9,000 pounds. 
you need to be as accurate as you can. You may have thought earlier on that the £4,000 a month spend was high, but you can see what it is returning for you. Now we're at the point, by changing these levers and not dramatically, really by you know adding 10% to your um, conversion rate, moving it from 20% to 30%, which is not difficult to do. So you're not actually spending any more money. You are returning £41,000 a month in potential revenue. You know That potential revenue is adding a half a million to your um, turnover almost straight away. Then it's a question of making ongoing incremental gains to make that even better and higher. I mean, we aim, you know, we start off with a 10% aim. That's our initial focus. That's our target. Then we want to get to, sorry, 10 times return on investment. Then we want to get to 15 times return on investment. Then 20 times return on investment. You know, if you get that, you're really making good earnings from the internet. I just want to check out sheet two here. Um, Nothing really to see here. All the calculations are in behind. So I hope this has been useful. It's a, it's a really useful tool to use. It's going to the output, you know, as I say, a rubbish in, rubbish out. The more accurate you are with your data going in, the better the output is going to be. The work types can all be changed according to what you do. Of course, if you need help with this, if you need help understanding how you can be more accurate with it, if you need help with planning with it, we are here to help you with it. If you would like a copy of this, we'll make it available for download at the link below. Uh, you can get in touch with us at, you can contact me at Stephen at, that's Stephen with a PH at moorelegaltechnology.co.uk. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. I hope you get a lot of value out of this and I hope you end up being extremely excited by the opportunities that the internet is bringing for you and your law firm because there certainly will be some there for you. So best of luck and um, enjoy. Someone in their bedroom like me could create an online law firm in six months that was generating, you know, I don't know what sort of sums I will have to talk about that maybe off the call, but there was a lot of money yeah. being generated more yeah. than probably, you know, the majority of law firms. I'm not talking about obviously the big players now, but you know, if there was a law firm in London, we would, we, we'd be beat, probably beating it in terms of its yeah. sort of le the eventual lead revenue that it would be creating for those whoever picked the leads up at, at the end of the chain. So yeah. And that, that, that's, and that's quite a mad concept, really, to think that you can do that. You could have done that at the time than we did. So, 